Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, I have the honor and privilege of reviewing something extremely special and rare indeed. This magnificent beast before you is the Zenith Timeless Chronomaster Heritage. And of course, before I get into it, I'll do a quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing my Brightling Chronospace today, uh, and I've started referring to it as the uh, the Robocop because <laughs> because of that blue, and also the the way the the digital displays remind me of the helmet of Robocop, but also the kind of metallic blue is just so particular. Now, if you're not familiar with Zenith, I have reviewed the Chronomaster Moon Phase before, and I very nearly pulled the trigger and and, and bought it myself. But we really should discuss. Uh, Zenith's incredible history. They are a highly respected Swiss luxury watchmaker. They were started all the way back in 1865 by Georges Favre Jaco at the very impressive age of only 22. This was in Le Loc in the canton of Neuchâtel. Uh, Zenith was purchased by the Louis Vuitton Moe Hennessy Group in 1999, and uh, quite recently, Jean-Claude Beaver became uh, their CEO in 2017. With him at the helm, they've really done some amazing things, which we'll get into in just a moment. But Zenith primarily are known for their in-house manufacturing. In fact, Zenith's founder revolutionized watch production uh, by uniting all the watchmaking professions under one roof. In 1899, they produced their first pocket chronograph. Throughout the 1900s, they were involved in the production of a lot of onboard instruments uh, for aircraft. The Zenith name actually refers to the, obviously, the highest point reached in the sky. And Georges chose this, uh, thereby symbolizing the heights of excellence in which uh, he wanted the brand to aspire to. In 1948, they released the Caliber 135, which was a legendary wristwatch chronometer movement. And this uh, became a, an award-winning watch. Most crowning achievement, and what Zenith is rarely known for, is the El Primero. This was released in 1960. 69 originally. It was the first ever integrated automatic chronograph movement. It was the only one at the time capable of measuring short times to the nearest tenth of a second, thanks to the balance uh, oscillating at a frequency of 36,000 vibrations an hour. Notably, Zenith's El Primero movement was uh, used by Rolex, in fact, between 1988 and 2000 for the Rolex Daytona chronograph. In 1994, they released their first ultra-thin automatic movements, uh, the Elite movement. This was one of the first calibers to be developed using computer-assisted design, and it was in fact voted a movement of the year by the trade press due to this extreme slenderness and uh, subsequent proven reliability. 2003, the brand invents the open concept based on a, a dial opening revealing the escapement uh, of the El Primero caliber. 2011, they won the uh, Geneva Watchmaking Grand Prix Awards for the best complication. In 2012, uh, Zenith made history with the Austrian skydiver Felix Baumgartner, who became the first man to break the sound barrier in a freefall, jumping from the edge of the stratosphere from a, a space capsule and landing in the um, New Mexico desert. Uh, Zenith served as the official timekeeper for the uh, the milestone jump, and of course the watch worn by Baumgartner uh, was the Zenith Stratus flyback featuring the world famous El Primero movement. In 2014, the Zenith Chronomaster El Primero lightweight wins the uh, Geneva Grand Prix again, um, the sports prize this time, for this very kind of avant-garde version of the legendary El Primero. The, the design was focused on shearing off any excess weight with the movement being made out of titanium and silicon components encased in an ultra sporty carbon case. 2015, they celebrated their 150th anniversary and then in 2017, we saw under Georges Claude Beaver many new innovations, including the Zenith Defy El Primero, which introduces a, a one one hundredth of a second mechanical accuracy, which is just staggering and just takes the, the whole El Primero to a whole new level. And if you remember in my 2017 uh, Basel World video, it was one of my favorite releases. Uh, it really is the ultimate embodiment of the spirit of Zenith and 
and, and especially their mastery of the chronograph. Really represents a quantum leap in both performance and mechanical design. But the innovation didn't stop there. They also released the Defy Lab, which is an astonishingly slim monocrystalline silicon oscillator that is unaffected by uh, magnetic fields, gravity or temperature. And this really challenged the very foundations of watchmaking mechanics. The watch was uh, made out of the lightest aluminium composite material and won the uh, Grand Prix of Horology Innovation Watch Prize Award for its entirely new scientific approach with regard to mechanics. It was revolutionary in its use of materials and its unprecedented levels of precision. But let's bring it back to planet Earth for a second. And here we have another 2017 release. Um, 2017 was obviously a very important year for the brand. It was a kind of uh, rebirth. And not only were they focusing on challenging the, the frontiers of, of watchmaking, they also presented a whole new line of beautiful chronographs, including the Heritage 146, which this shares the same case with and also it houses a classic El Primera movement. So where does this special edition from Timeless Luxury fit in? Well, Timeless Luxury, if you're not aware of them, they are an official authorized dealer for Zenith. They teamed up and this is the result. So let's get the basic specifications out of the way and then uh, we'll discuss it in a little bit more detail. So the diameter is 38 millimeters. We have a height of just about 13.5, I would say. Lug to lug is 46 and a half. And then a lug width of 19 millimeters. So the scale is is very kind of faithful to the famous uh, El Primeros of the 60s. And I think that's fantastic because, you know, obviously it's, it's uh, more of a classic size. The case is entirely stainless steel, 50 meters water resistance. Beautiful beveling here on the lugs, a brushed finish on the top and then high polish on the sides. We have a domed sapphire crystal there, anti-reflective coating, high polished bezel, that kind of a little step up, which frames it beautifully. Comes on this very soft and supple leather strap that tapers nicely. Uh, we have a little signed buckle there with the uh, Zenith star. The underside of the strap is a, a soft um, calf skin and it's stitched with a slightly off brown. The, the, the strap is black, but I, I just love that very subtle detail and in, in, in color variation. Now the inspiration for this piece was the vintage A273. The guys at Timeless Luxury really felt that this was a, a bit of an underrated chronograph. They loved the, the classical tri-register layout as we see here. And they took the inspiration for the dial, which is this kind of champagne sunburst effect uh, from this particular reference. They were quite clear that this is not a reissue. The original was in a drastically different case. Other similarities include the tachymeter running around the outside of the dial, the very 60s applied batons for the hours. We also get the applied star logo and those very precise, clear seconds and minutes track. They also went for blued hands, uh, not only on the main seconds of the chronograph, but also all the subdials. That unmistakable, gorgeous hue of blued hands. It, it's a subtle touch, but so elegant. I adore the three-dimensional Zenith star. Each of the points are faceted at different angles, so whichever way you angle it, it plays with the light. That sunburst effect is, is just ravishing. It's subtle, it's not too loud, it's not too garish. I also appreciate that they didn't um, adorn the dial with too much script like uh, the, the more famous El Primeros. There's no writing um, boasting of, of the frequency of the movement, for example. Don't have the clutter of a date. Subdials are beautifully framed and sunken with, of course, tiny little concentric circles. There's a really nice sense of balance of form and function here. For the hour and minutes of the main time, we have a uh, leaf style hands, which is the departure from the traditional baton hands we saw in the A273. We have these piston style pushers here uh, for the stop and start and then the reset at the bottom. Signed crown, again with the uh, Zenith star. So if we engage the chronograph, 
we have that wonderfully smooth actuation that is so typical of the El Primero and a column wheel chronograph. Just look how smooth that is. So we have the seconds for the, the uh, main time there. We have a 12 hour counter at the six o'clock and then 30 minutes at the three o'clock. If we turn the watch over, we see the splendor of that world famous movement. There it is in all its glory. And you really do get a good look at it, um, assisted by this skeletonized rotor. And we have a screwed in case back. So this is the Zenith El Primero 4061, 31 joules. It has a power reserve of 50 hours. It's a total of 282 components. Unfortunately, it does not have hacking, but we do get manual wind. And as you can see, proudly displayed on the rotor, it is a certified chronometer. So the performance is uh, exceptional. Now the original A273 had a manual wind, I believe it was the caliber 146. Now that was beautiful in its own right, but no match compared to the legendary 36,000 vibrations per hour El Primero. It has a staggering complexity, tarted up to the nines with pelage work, blued screws, beveling, Cote de Genève stripes. Then we have a, a nice contrast of surfaces with some brushed in one direction and then other parts brushed in another. Even the column wheel is thermally blued, which I think is a, a really nice touch. Its crowning feature is proudly decorated as well. As you already know, it is one of the most influential chronograph movements in the world. So it's known for many things, for being the first automatic chronograph, for its extremely high frequency, 25% more than uh, your average watch in, in 2017. It's also one of the relatively few integrated chronographs where chronograph mechanisms share the same space as the timekeeping mechanism. Many chronographs today use modules. Now, essentially a separate layer of mechanism placed on top of the movement. Now, they do their job fantastically well, but as we often see with the 7750 and many others, they are much thicker than a truly integrated chronograph due to this stacked architecture. For timekeeping, the Zenith employs a ever popular smooth balance wheel regulation combination, it uses a regulator index for precise control of its rate, which makes it simple for watchmakers to modify its timekeeping, its accuracy, both in terms of time and precision of the chronograph are owed to this old school approach of high frequency design that a very small number of brands, including Zenith, pioneered decades ago. And this is really what allows the chronograph to be reliably read at 0.1 second increments. Very rare among modern chronographs. And the fact you get to see it and enjoy it in all its glory, I, I gotta be honest, the, the, the back is almost <laughs> as enjoyable as the front. So one of the advantages of this, of this, you know, it not being uh, modules stacked on, on, on top of each other is you, you get to see uh, let's see if I can actually demonstrate it. Get to see the operation. If I go reset, start, stop. You get to see it actually do its business. That beautiful column wheel. So how does this bad boy wear? Let's pop it on the wrist and find out. Several moments later. Now on my skinny six and a quarter inch wrist, it fits wonderfully. Um, it's very light, only 71 grams. And the way the dial, the, the blued hands capture the light, uh, that champagne kind of cream color, very alluring. It has a very dressy feel. The lugs are quite uh, long, but um, I think it hugs the wrist very nicely. It's also quite slender. This is probably one of the most slender chronographs, uh, automatic chronographs, I should say, that I've ever worn. Very comfortable. For the small, medium and larger wrist, the scale and proportions will work tremendously well. It gives a, a quite commanding, reassuring presence on the wrist. So um, let's summarize the positives and negatives.
Well, first of all, the quality is there. It's comparable to some of the very big boys in the game. I would put this up there with JLC, Rolex, that kind of level in terms of its finishing. It's flawless, uh, exquisitely done, super sharp transitions and edges. It's unequivocally luxury. It feels luxurious from the strap. Everything is just beautifully made. The other big positive of this watch is undoubtedly that movement. It has serious horological muscle that any enthusiast has to respect. And probably it's the best thing about this watch. It's an absolute pleasure and joy to use. Thirdly, I love the classic elegance of the piece. It's handsome, it's graceful, uh, it's appealing, it has all the charm of those 60s chronographs, but bang up to date in a more contemporary uh, case and of course materials. It's a pure delight to, to look at without being flashy. It's very kind of understated and it's rarity. I mean, being one of only 25 in the world, that, that is a, an extremely exclusive amount and just goes to show you how much Zenith must appreciate timeless luxury. I mean, I do as well. It's rarity, I think, will also assist to um, keeping its value. So the negatives, well, the biggest negative for me has to be the small crown. They actually decided on a smaller crown. If you look at the, um, the Heritage 146, the crown is substantially thicker. I think the diameter is fine, but I really do believe it, it should have protruded a little more. It's very difficult to grip when you want to manually wind it. However, I do appreciate that they put a little notch in the back. There are some beautiful, subtle elements of design uh, that, that make it you know, that you do appreciate over time, but it's just too undersized. I found it annoying, almost painful to wind. While I think the smaller crown gives it a more classy appearance, it definitely diminishes the practicality. It's kind of dwarfed there by the, um, the piston head style pushes, which I really like. And actually, that brings me on to my, um, my second biggest negative of the piece. This is a sports watch. However, they've decided to go with leaf hands for the hour and minutes. I don't think it works at all. And it really pains me to say this, but I, you know, I, I have to be honest here. I understand the, the motivation behind it. They wanted to make it more dressy, but what makes a watch dressy really is how you wear it. It's already elegant enough. Um, I think it, they should have gone with batons. It, it's just a bit of a clash of genres. Uh, now, you'll probably say, well, what about the, um, the Tudor Black Bay uh, chronograph? That's different. That's a marriage of two sporty genres, divers, racing chronographs. These kind of leaf hands, to me, I mean, in my personal experience, I, I just associate them with early 20th century dress pieces. A little bit too refined. You'll probably say, well, 146 has the leaf hands, but it has a more delicate, minimalist aesthetic. And with that more pronounced sunburst effect, it's even more dressy. I think it really works there. The hands might do it for you. I think I think at the end of the day, it, it, it is a, all about personal taste, but that's what makes a true classic when it all works and blends together seamlessly. My last negative is the value. This is priced at about seven and a half thousand dollars. While you do get a lot of watch for your money, and of course the opportunity to own an extremely rare limited edition, I can't help but think about what else is out there. For example, uh, I saw um, a gold version of the A273 on eBay going for about five. Uh, okay, sure, it doesn't have the prestigious movement, but you know you can buy an El Primero for significantly less, a few grand less than this. Uh, not to mention on the used market, the uh, the Chronomaster Moon Face which I myself came very close to buying. Having said that, it, it, when it's on the wrist, it does feel like, you know, a seven and a half grand watch. I mean, it really does. Another very slight negative is the 19 millimeter lug width. Whenever it's an odd number, it's a nuisance to buy straps for. 20 millimeters, or actually I think 18 would have suited the proportions better. Not the end of the world, but you know, an annoyance, especially something that has the potential to be a strap monster like this. I mean, with such a neutral color scheme, this would look wonderful in a whole variety of combinations. But in conclusion, Zenith, in my opinion, is one of the most underappreciated luxury brands. Despite its shortcomings, it does still epitomize everything you want in a true 
luxury watch. The refinement, not only in its precision, from its splendid quality, the prestigious movement, the rarity, and finally the heritage one has to respect. To me, this is tasteful luxury. For the true enthusiast, kind of stealth luxury, it's not about status here. I've really enjoyed the short time I've had with this piece. A massive shout out to Timeless Luxury in Frisco, Texas. Uh, I'll leave a link to them. They are one of my recommended sellers. Um, they are an authorized dealer for countless brands. I highly recommend them. Thank you for lending this in. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Um, please don't forget to add your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.